Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan, and today we will be looking at Super Deep, mutagenic body melding cellular parasite, explored in detail. Writer and director Arseny Sayohin's Super Deep feels like the adopted baby of John Carpenter's The Thing, as well as Joe Dante's The Hole and Neil Blomkamp's Zygote. Melina Radulovich is Anna, an actress who has the determination of R.J. McCready, Agent Starling's brains, and Ripley's courage. As a movie, Super Deep might feel lengthy for a two-hour film, and the editing could have been better. Having said that, it's nonetheless a masterpiece, if we consider the low budget that the film was made on. It's Olga. She escaped. The practical effects used are as good as, if not better, than films with ten times its budget, in which the green screens are thrown right at our faces. Well, because of CGI. This one here used minimal visual effects, and relied almost entirely on practical effects. One may even say that the final creature would have made the xenomorph maestro H.R. Giger proud. Super Deep revolves around a mysterious disease, caused by a fungus that was discovered 12,000 meters below the land, at Kola Superdeep Borehole, which is the real place in the Pehengetsky district of Russia. Milena Radulovich's Anna is an epidemiologist who gets caught in the middle of the infectious outbreak within the depths of the earth and will have to do everything that she can to stop it from reaching the surface. But the cellular parasite is highly powerful and has the ability to cause mutation in people. Will Anna and the others succeed? Without further ado, let's cut to the chase and dive deep into this Russian horror thriller. However, before we go into today's analysis, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small step for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the video. In 1984, a Russian epidemiologist named Anna Ferdova was heading for the MX23 project. She approved the human tests of the vaccine MX23. Dr. Zotov offered to volunteer for the test subject and dies a gruesome death. After this, she tries to resign, but Colonel Morozov of the military intelligence and the project head convinces the heartbroken and devastated Anna to continue with the research, as many Russian soldiers in Africa would soon become dependent on her vaccine. A few days later, Anna is seen celebrating the new year with her family and friends, who congratulate her on developing a vaccine on extremely short notice. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. This signals the fact that Anna continued with human trials, and many lives may have been lost. Soon, she receives a call from Colonel Morozov, who tells her that sounds of unknown origin were recorded in Kola Superdeep, a borehole that's 12,000 meters deep. After that, 20 people went missing from the place. To the world, it's just the deepest borehole in the world. But in reality, it's a secret research lab. The colonel asks Anna to join him on his visit to Kola Superdeep, because the government would shut down the facility within the next 24 hours. Furthermore, Dr. Grigorov, the head of research, was denounced because there were reports that he was hiding traces of evidence of an unknown disease. Anna's task was to retrieve the samples from the facility, and in return, she would be made the head of Military Biological Defense Institute. Colonel Morozov, Anna, and a team of soldiers, led by Major Sergei Mekkiev, search Kola Superdeep in Murmansk. <laughs> Upon reaching the facility, a man, possibly a researcher, approaches their chopper. It seems that he was not following the orders of staying back. As a result, he was shot several times by men guarding the facility. However, he got back up and continued his walk towards the chopper. It was now that the team realized that he had a grenade in his hand. The man finally detonated the grenade and killed himself. Fortunately, nothing much happened to the chopper or its passengers. While examining the remains of the man who just blew himself up, Anna discovers that the tissues had a strange reddish glow. She collects samples from the tissues in a test tube, but they quickly decay. We learn from the lieutenant colonel that the man had come from the depths of the superdeep and grown inhumanly strong. Later, they meet the deputy head of research at Kola Superdeep, Peter Akunetsov. He was also the man who had reported that Dr. Grikorov had been hiding information about the disease. Without Dr. Grikorov's help, it would be impossible for Anna and her team to secure the required samples. When Anna and the colonel meet him, he tries to strike a deal with them. He wanted the staff, who were sealed in the lower levels of the facility, to be evacuated safely, or else he wouldn't disclose the security passcodes he had recently changed. Two attempts left. You really did 
did change the codes. No. Peter, the deputy head of the facility, confirms that the security codes, including that of the elevator, had in fact been changed by Grigorov. Interestingly enough, if one entered three wrong passcodes at the elevator, it would straight away plummet down the shaft. It was just a security measure, but proved crucial later. Anyway, Dr. Grigorov enters the correct code, and the group descend down to the facility, over 5,000 meters below the surface. During their descent, Grigorov took the opportunity to depressurize the elevator, while putting on an oxygen mask to save himself from passing out. While the others passed out, he took the elevator's key and escaped into the facility. The group then reached a level that the staff called Resort. It was basically the living quarters. However, they soon learned that there are two more elevators. One of them leads to the level named Sahara. Apart from these, there are switchback pathways from each level to the surface, but these pathways have temperatures around 200 degrees, and only specifically crafted suits can allow one to travel through these pathways. At the resort, the group comes across the engineer Nikolai and the doctor Kira. Please, I promise, he'll do everything you say. You better listen. They were left behind during the first evacuation, ordered by Grigorov to wait for rescue. After performing tests on both Kira and Nikolai, Anna bumps into Grigorov, who pleads with her to evacuate the others up the shaft. Anna tells the others about him, and the soldiers then fire at him, but he manages to flee with the elevator to the Sahara level. Major Sergei suggests using the shaft to go and hunt for the runaway scientist, but using the shafts to reach Sahara is a tricky business. They finally find the door to the desired shaft, but Grigorov had previously ordered to weld it shut. On the door, ominous warnings like, help us, deliver us from evil, and insatiable hunger were scratched in Latin. Just as they were about to open the doors, they got unlocked from the inside. Example, Sahara, a lone staff named Olga, walks out of it without any protective gear. She is then taken to the medical lab for examination while a team of soldiers descend down in search of Grigorov. Olga shows signs of fever and claiming that she is feeling cold. Out of nowhere and within a span of 15 minutes, her back develops mold and fungus. Anna quickly collects samples from her back to study them. The mold-like globules had torn out of her skin. The mold from Olga's back and the tissue sample of the man who blew himself up with a grenade showed stark similarities. To make things worse than they already are, Grigorov blows up the facility's pressure pump and causes an explosion in the facility itself. The team now has only about an hour to collect the required samples and find a way out of the super deep pit, or else they could get sealed inside forever. Anna sought Major Sergei's help to make Olga wear a hazmat suit, but when they return, they see that all the walls have been covered with mold, and that Olga was laying on the ground, her body half-melted, but alive. Olga breaks out of her containment and attacks Kira, before turning into this hideous form of the cellular parasite. As the two of them attempt to take samples of the globular projection, bursts open and releases a thick cloud of spores into the air. The spores infect Sergei, but Anna is smart enough to get a hold of a gas mask to shield herself from the spores. However, in the process, she gets attacked by Kira, who is heavily mutated by now because of her infection. It seems that her ribs broke out of her chest, pounced on Anna to attack her. Luckily, Anna manages to evade the monstrous Kira. She uses a fire extinguisher to blow away the spores from the door, after which Nikolai opens the door to help her escape. Sergei has been infected by the cellular parasite spores and would soon experience the same fate as Olga and Kira. Bulgaria? Peter deduces that the cellular parasite behaves similar to cordyceps, a unique fungus that infects ants and then forces them to return to their nest when it releases spores to infect the entire colony. Olga, too, had returned back from Sahara and releases the spores. On the other hand, Anna deduces that the parasite dies in a cold environment. She discusses the situation with Morozov and tells him that they should focus their attention on evacuating the survivors instead of bringing the samples to a populated area. However, the colonel dismisses her suggestion and tells her that she should help Sergei get to Moscow in a hazmat suit but he has started to show signs of mutations. Morozov simply wants Russia to have a novel biological weapon that would help Russia gain its power and dominance over the world. But Anna knows that it is exactly what the cellular parasite wants, to travel in a warm-blooded host into a heavily populated area.
The men and Anna start to prepare for ascent through the shafts to the surface. But then, Sergei receives a radio broadcast from Igorov, who was leading the men who had ascended down the shafts to Sahara to find Grigorov. Igorov warns the men about strange things, and that he and his men had come under attack. Upon Sergei's insistence, three soldiers went into the shaft to find Igorov and his men. Two of them return and reveal that they saw something big and monstrous inside, and that their weapons were rendered useless against the being. After this point, a third soldier comes out of the destroyed shaft with a missing hand, but he strangely sliced his own throat as the shaft door closed. Suddenly, something starts to pound on the door from the other end, and the survivors rush out of there. Now that the resort shaft was destroyed, the only option was to make the elevator free fall downwards towards the Sahara shaft and escape from there. The monster had managed to break open the resort shaft door, and its cries resembled the muffled screams of several humans. The soldiers remained at the resort to fight the monster, while Anna, the colonel, Nikolai and Peter descended down the elevator. Anna and the men find the lower level was frozen and had been abandoned. Furthermore, they found an audio recording of Grigorov's last words. He mentions that the cellular parasite controls the nervous and muscular systems, and also had the ability to conjoin its victims together. Grigorov revealed that he wished to see the monster one last time before his death, and the colonel decided that he would go through into the super hot environment to retrieve the elevator key from Grigorov. Meanwhile, Anna, Nikolai, and Peter deduced that Grigorov had been trying to keep the cellular parasite a secret. He'll look after you. When the colonel didn't return within the predecided time, Anna went out to get him and found him dead. However, she recovered the elevator key from him. The entire place had become the resting place of the organism and had growing molds that covered the walls. Upon her return, Peter forced Anna to give him the key, as he intended to take credit for the discovery of the cellular parasite. They returned to the resort level from Sahara, and could hear the bellowing cries of the creature. Peter got attacked by a large creature that was made up of several moaning and wailing hosts. Anna was quick and smart enough to take off her clothes and pour ice water on herself, because that would make her body a hostile environment for the cellular parasite's infection. She got past the creature with relative ease, and in the process, retrieved the elevator key from Peter's body, that was now conjoined with the bulk of other hosts. Only in her innerwear, they found Nikolai, and together, they barely manage to escape the creature as they enter the elevator. In the elevator, they find that Major Sergei had melted into the floor. The Major begged to them that he wouldn't be allowed to reach the surface, or else the infection would spread into the world. Anna seconds the Major's thoughts, but Nikolai is hell-bent about escaping through the elevator, and by extension, his death. Sergei then kills Nikolai, and gave Anna respite from the physical fight that she and Nikolai were having, but by now, she too was infected. Under her skin, she was glowing red, just like Olga or the tissues of the man who had blown himself up at the beginning. Anna remembers that three wrong elevator codes would send it free-falling to the ground. She managed to enter two of them, and she gets pulled by a team wearing hazmat suits right after she entered the third code. The elevator plummeted downwards, but Anna was saved. Now out in the open, she manages to steal a grenade from a soldier and blew herself up into pieces, hence repeating the events that took place at the beginning of the film, and this explained why the man chose to blow himself up as well. Olga. The mutagenic body melding cellular parasite. As mentioned before, the cellular parasite doesn't just take control of the muscular and nervous system to transform people into hideous beasts, but also causes several mutations and deformities in humans, including their melding and conjoining. The final stage of the monster is the combination of several host bodies joined together. Although the creature is strong enough to break through walls, it remains relatively slow for an organism. For locomotion, it both crawls and saunters, hence giving the victim an advantage. It is noteworthy that the several humans that made up the monster continue to wail and scream as if they were still feeling the pain despite becoming a part of each other. This signifies their undead nature, and one may call the creature a melded zombie with an insatiable hunger for more hosts. The creature prefers hot environments, and we know this because its safe haven was a place that was about 200 degrees hot. Coming in contact with temperatures around the freezing point destroys it on a cellular level. Historically speaking, the monster may be considered a version of the Greek monster Hecatonicris, which had 50 heads and 100 limbs. 
Apart from this, the cellular parasite creates other forms of monsters for different purposes. For instance, Major Sergei and Olga transformed into molds as their bodies melted. They produced spores that would further infect other organisms. This particular form of mutation resembles asexual reproduction through spore formation, a process that's seen in several ferns, mosses, and green algae. Thus, the cellular parasite is quite capable of reproducing on its own, a capability that makes it a greater threat than it already is. It is important to note that the film bears uncanny resemblances with Neil Blomkamp's short film, Zygote. In the film, an asteroid strikes the Earth in the icy Northwest Territories. It contained a sentient crystalline matter called quartz. The quartz transmits gigabytes of information through beams of light, and this light influences humans to assimilate with others. The resultant monster is a golem made out of human corpses. To learn more about Zygote, please check out our video titled Zygote, Golem Made of Human Corpses, a sci-fi masterpiece that deserves a full movie. You can find the link in the description below. Another major inspiration for this film has to be John Carpenter's The Thing because of the similar icy settings and the sense of claustrophobia and dread that the two films share. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one and be safe.